Hi everyone, welcome to my Age of Wonders Shadow Magic video. Um, I decided to make this video, it's actually my first one on YouTube, because I feel this game has gone a bit underrepresented. I wanted to make kind of an introduction and tutorial video to give people both an idea of what the game is like and then sort of an introduction of how to play it. It's a turn-based strategy game with RPG elements, kind of fantasy RPG. So think kind of like Heroes of Might and Magic meets Civilization. Really great game and I hope to show you why here in this video. Um, so let's dive right in. Um, just go to a single scenario. You can play over internet, uh, LAN, and email. There's like an email wrapper you can download. If you're not familiar with play by email, basically what you do, since it's a turn-based game, is you would you know do everything in your turn, uh, you know fight all your battles, etc., and then you would email the save game file to the next person, and they would download that and take their turn, so on and so on. Um, and what the email wrapper does is it just automates all of the, you know, sending the emails, downloading the file, putting it in the right spot and everything. So yeah, that's kind of a neat way to do it if you have friends who you can't get together with, you know, play a really long session of this because the games can drag on for quite some time. So let's go to single scenario. Um, we're going to generate a random scenario for this video. And let's go to advanced settings. I'm going to do it on a large map. Let's do four players, why not? Um, these are exactly what you'd think. Starting town, you can say how you know updated it is. Independence, um, unlike games, unlike Heroes of Might Magic, for example, there are, you can set uh, independent units to come and attack you. So think kind of like barbarians in Civ. Um, that just means there'll be roaming people that'll, you know, attack your units and whatnot. And I, I kind of like the challenge. Um, I think it adds a nice bit of strategy to the game. The rest of this I'll just leave on average. I will include the Underground and Shadowland. Those are basically two different layers to the map. So you know how in Heroes of Might Magic you had your Underground with you know underground entrances and whatnot. This actually has two separate layers. The underground, which is sort of kind of like the Heroes of Might Magic Underground, uh, you have reduced visibility, and generally your units will move slower if they aren't kind of an underground race. Um, and then Shadowland, you'll actually move faster, so you can kind of consider going into the Shadowland almost like a highway. Um, but your units will be weaker in combat unless, of course, they are acclimated to it. So I'll go ahead and accept that. And we'll have three computer players, and I'll be human. Uh, exploration, you can actually set it so that you don't have to discover what the map actually looks like. There will still be fog of war, but you'll get an idea of all the structures and the terrain and everything like that. Um, we will customize our wizard, which is I wouldn't recommend using the base wizards, like it's just so much more fun to make your own. And Allied Victory, uh, leave that off just because I don't want the CPUs allying against me or anything like that. That would be not very fun. We'll go ahead and start. Um, we'll create my wizard. It still gives you the option in case you want to, to choose from the preset wizards, but like I said, I just think it's much more fun to create your own. So this is kind of, this is your wizard's sphere, which is essentially what they specialize in. Are you a death specialist, a life specialist, or are you kind of a bit of everything? Um, I'm thinking I'm going to play undead, at least for my starting race. So for that, I will be a death specialist. I think that's um, appropriate. The specializations really just indicate what sorts of spells your wizard will have. So in this case, I'll have, you know, raise on dead spells, cursing spells, things like that. Whereas life, you'd get healing, you know, summon fairies, I don't know, all sorts of stuff like that. Um, these are skills that you can pick. If you look at the bottom of the screen there, it'll say what these skills do. So for example, scholar, all spells cost 20% less research points. It's kind of nice. Uh, and these are beneficial spells. You can pick one. And unless you pick a negative trait for your wizard, you can't pick any more. Now you'll notice Explorer is actually grayed out to start with. Uh, it gives you 20% extra movement points. You have to actually pick a negative one even to access that, So because it's actually really good. What I will do for this, 
Um, I'll do Conqueror. And I will do Anarchist. Decrease race and unit relations with other races. Everybody hates the undead anyways, so that's not quite as important in my opinion. And then I will do... I like Survivalist. That's just less upkeep for my units. Your units do cost gold upkeep, so that just makes large armies more manageable. So this is going to be under the... Uh, strategy of summon as many undead units as I can and run them over everyone else. Undead. There are 15 races. Um, they're actually pretty varied. If you download the 1.4 community patch, which I highly recommend, and I'll put a link to it in the description, uh, it actually makes the unit races a bit more varied in terms of just, you know, they're better at what they're supposed to be good at. Um, but for this, I'm just going to do Undead, because they're fun and evil and nasty looking. Um, for my wizard portrait, I think I will go with uh, Morgan Freeman Jesus. Because why not? And undead there will be pink. Undeader, it is your turn. Okay, so this is the world map. Um, we'll start out, this is my starting town. I can click on it, it'll actually show my starting army down here in this panel. Here's the mini map over here. I've spawned on the surface and the southern central part of the map. What I will do first is I want to give you an idea of the combat before I do anything else. I actually did a previous video and I went in like great detail about all of the economics and you know structure building and all that stuff and I realized I didn't even get to the combat until about 40 minutes into the video. So let's start off. I'm going to take all of my army except for my wizard who I will camp in the town here because Keep him in his wizard tower essentially is what you want to do. You don't really want your wizard to get into combat because if he dies and you don't have a wizard tower to resurrect him at, you lose. Um, let's go ahead and move my army out this way. You'll notice I've got the yellow path. That's how far I'll get this turn. Go ahead and move him out. I've got these two stupid zombies which are slowing me down. So I could leave them behind actually split up my army just by clicking on these little uh, buttons down there. So like if I wanted to move even further, I could leave my archer behind. You may think, well, okay. Now, something that's interesting about this, uh, the way that they do combat, is that you'll notice I go and I move on to these two independent units. I want to take over the mine that they're using, and my archer is still included. The reason for that is something called the adjacent hex rule in this game, meaning combat is taking place on this mine that I'm attacking, and any unit adjacent to that hex will actually be brought into combat. So even though I left my skeleton archer behind me, he still gets brought into combat by this rule. We'll go ahead and hit manual battle, we'll see what the combat is like. Defender gets to go first, so he moves and shoots me with his crossbow, and he moves his swordsman up, his, what do they call it, infantry. Now, it is turn-based, just like the uh, world map, and you can move your units in any order that you'd like. Um, so say, for example, I wanted to move this Death Knight up to kill this crossbowman. The green movement allowment, you'll notice how it turns to yellow and then to red. Um, red is as far as I can move in one turn. The gray means that I'll have to wait until my next turn to actually get to him. Now, that seems like a sensible thing to do. Uh, I want to get rid of that stupid crossbowman as soon as I can, so I'll go ahead and move him up. I've got my hero here. Um, heroes are basically better than normal units. They also gain XP. You can equip them with items and things like that. Um, I wanted I could attack him right now. The difference in the color of movement is how many attacks I get. So if I attack them within my green movement, I'll get three attacks. Yellow, I'll get two attacks, and red, I'll only get one. 
I may actually do is move him here and attack. That way he won't be in the way of my archer. Um, so I'll move him here. And then I'll actually get an attack off like that. I get an attack, he gets a counterattack. He actually missed his counterattack. Um, next thing I will do, I'm actually going to try and shoot this guy with the shield. It's actually not a good idea. You'll notice there are all these different uh, abilities down here. So, for example, my archer, he's undead, which means he's immune to death damage, fear, poison, things like that. Um, he also has the archery ability. This guy, for example, he can hit you with this sword, but he's also got an ability called Block, which is he gets plus 5 defense when facing any physical ranged attack. Basically, he has it's harder to hit him with arrows because he's got a shield. Um, now, the thing is, is, I can't even get in range of the crossbowman, so I'm still going to try and attack him anyways with my archer. You'll notice on the lower left uh, some stats about this shot. Most importantly is the 2 hit. 10. Um, that means I have a 10% chance to hit. Now I will strike three times, or I will shoot three arrows, so I'll have three chances of 10% each. And just below the two hit, you can see that I'm being negatively impacted, not only by his shield, but the height difference. He's above me, so that makes it harder to hit, and also the distance. I'll go ahead and shoot three times. I actually managed to hit him one time for three damage. Next, I'm actually going to try and seduce him. Maybe I should have done this first. Um, vampires are great for this. What you can do is walk up. <laughs> I succeeded in seducing him, and now I can control him. Great. This is actually really nice. So I can even try to run him up against his own little crossbowman. I'll move him up. What I could do, too, um, I could cast a death ray with my wizard. Um, your wizard can cast spells in any uh, combat that happens within his domain. I'll show what domain exactly is uh, as soon as combat is over, but right now I actually have no mana. I get 13 mana per turn, but I have no mana to start with, so I can't do that. Um, so I'll go ahead and end my turn. <laughs> he killed his own infantryman. Mutiny. And I will just move a Death Knight up. I'll get a couple swings off on him. Actually, you know what? She already... Oh, they get to seduce. Okay, only once per combat. So I'll move her up, actually, and try and seduce him. <laughs> and that actually wins me combat. And yes, in case you were wondering, it does actually give me control of this unit. Um, now, since he's human and I'm undead, his morale is horrible. Um, well, terrible. And if I leave him alone, he will actually abandon my army. So I'm going to move him back in so that he, you know, won't leave. And I was telling you, I can cast spells within my domain. This pink border of awesomeness is my wizard's domain. That's my wizard right there, little Jesus Morgan Freeman. Now, if I move him out of my wizard tower, You'll notice my domain shrinks significantly. That's part of the reason you do want to keep your wizard almost always in a tower. So I'm going to go ahead and move him back. This gives me a good opportunity to show off the uh, other side of things, which is kind of the economy of the building and everything like that. Oops. Okay, so over here on the left is what I can produce. This, is, this tab is for units, so I can build zombies, swordsmen, archers. You can build buildings. Uh, you can click on them, and on the right it'll tell you what you can get. So if I build this building, then I'll be able to build more Death Knights and Vampires. If I build this, I'll be able to produce priests and increase my mana, so on and so forth. And there's you can even upgrade your wizard tower that will allow further upgrades to it. I could raise or loot the city, I could produce more housing, more merchandise, try and grow my city or grow my income. For now, I think we'll build a monastery.
So I'll go ahead and click that. You'll notice I have 250 gold. As soon as I hit build, it goes down to 130 because this costs 120 gold to build. It also takes time to build, so that'll take three turns uh, worth of production from my town, and it will it'll build that. Another aspect to this is you may wonder, well, how can I get more spells? How can I get more abilities? Um, that's actually under this research area right here. So you click on research. These are all of the spells that I can research right now. Currently it has me researching enchant weapon. Um, it's a good idea. Um, just because an enchant weapon, it's just a, it's a cheap decent ability. It's actually especially good for archers. Uh, you can enchant their bow and they're just much more effective. So I'll go ahead and leave it on that. This little slider here lets you slide how much of your power you want to use toward generating mana. So if I wanted I could you know, hit close and I would be getting 20 mana per turn instead of 13. Or I could gear that more toward research. Um, you'll notice though it makes a difference on how long it takes me to research this spell. So as I slide it to the left, it goes to four turns. If I slide it to the right, it goes to two turns. Um, to start out with, maybe I'll leave it like this, just because that will get me eight mana by next turn, which will allow my wizard to cast his death ray next combat. Um, so if I do happen to attack maybe, you know, this independent party over here or somebody else, I'll be able to cast a spell as well. All right, well, oh, I'll go ahead and there's just, you can, this is just the next active party button. You can click it and cycle through. The only one that's left is my wizard, so I'm just going to set him to guard so that he stays inside my town. And that's the end of my turn. Through, all the independents are moving and everything else. Okay, so you get a new turn report, day two dawns, I generated 33 gold and 8 mana. Uh, for the most part, gold is generated by your towns. Mana is generated by your wizard, your hero, also your towns. Um, what I will do now, I'm trying to see where I would like to go next. This is a shadow portal that'll take me to the Shadowland. This is an underground uh, entrance. It'll take me to the underground. For now, though, I kind of want to follow. I do believe that might be another town right there, just that little tent on the edge. So I'm going to go up on this road. Oh, it's not. It's actually a circus. So if I want, I can take that over. It looks like I'd be able to recruit some more guys from there. Uh, sounds like something that might be worth doing. So let's, again, use the same trick I did before where I leave these two slower guys behind and move in to attack. Manual battle. Now, since I saved eight mana last turn, I will have the ability to cast a spell in this combat, unlike I was unlike last turn where I wasn't able to. So let's see, first thing I want to do... Hmm. Looks like both of these guys are ranged. Um, also, this is a good time to give you an idea of what the different stats... Because um, I was looking at this mystic and I was like, wow, that's actually a pretty good unit. Um, this right here is attack. That's your chance to strike. It's not the amount of damage, that's actually the next stat, which is uh, the maximum amount of damage you can deal with each strike. So those are two separate uh, stats. Defense is your chance to be, chance to avoid physical damage. Uh, resistance, which is this next one, is the chance to avoid magical damage. And then you have your hit points and your movement points. Um, so she's actually, she or he or it, uh, is fairly beefy and has really good resistance, so I probably don't want to cast my spell on her. This guy, on the other hand, has quite crappy resistance, quite crappy defense for that matter, too. So what I'll probably do is see if I can focus him down 
first. I'll move my archer to attack him. Keep him within his green movement uh, area so that he still gets three shots off. Move this guy up. The crossbowman is kind of different from some of the other archers in that his crossbow bolt is more likely to hit. Uh, you'll notice that's an 85% chance to hit, 60% chance to hit there. But you only get one shot. And it actually does a lot better damage. So it kind of puts all your eggs in one basket. I'm going to try and get a shot off on her. And I missed. I'm going to cast my death ray on this guy. Dealt four damage and it cursed him. We're saying you can mouse over it. It'll basically reduces his resistance by two, uh, prevents natural healing and regeneration. So mostly I just wanted it for the four damage that it did. The other stuff is just kind of icing on the cake. This guy up, he gets one attack off because he was in the red movement allowance. Now if I could seduce... Oh, that target is immune to seduction. So sad. And it doesn't look like... She'll be able to get in range. What if I move her over? There we go, then I can get an attack with that guy. Perfect. Now, she, what she's been doing uh, is using this magic bolts ability on my guys. And it's a magic attack, so what I'm thinking I'll do, since these vampires have fairly decent resistance, is I'll move her in front of my crossbowman like this. And she will serve as an obstacle in case this mystic tries to attack my marksman. So she'll try and attack the or the the crossbowman back there, but there's a good chance that it'll the attack will fire on her instead just because she's in the way. There's a kind of a cover slash uh, obstacle system in place, and I'll try and do the same thing over here. So go ahead and end my turn. Sure enough, uh, she. Did manage to kill my my guy. I'm trying to see if there was a way to look at the combat log from that, but I don't believe there is. There probably is a way, and I just don't know what it is. Um, I wasn't watching. You could probably go back in the video and notice at one point during her three attacks, it did say that Mystic misses Vampire, which means that one of those shots actually did fire off on my vampire and did technically miss the vampire so she did block one of those shots from my crossbowman it just wasn't enough to actually save him i'll do a similar thing over here oh great that's actually a zero percent chance to hit the reason being that tent gets in the way so i'll cancel that i'll try and move him back here with a ten percent chance to hit with two shots not great but i'll take it anyway because retaliate anyways. Go ahead and move these guys over. Hopefully just try and surround this mystic and beat her up. Not going very well so far. Both of my knights seem to do this. And she's going to use magic bolts on them. Magic Bolts actually doesn't even do that much damage. The Crossbowman is just really weak, and so... You know, I'm not really worried about these guys dying if that's all she's going to do. Uh, she does have an actual strike, and... You know, actually does decent damage, so I'm surprised the AI isn't using that instead. Wow, he's actually taking quite a bit of damage. I can finish her off with my Death Knight. Hey, hey! He killed her. You probably noticed that little silver metal pop on top of him. Your units do gain experience. Um, and they will... But only two levels of experience. It's not like your heroes. So Joseph, my hero. Mean-looking mother. Uh, actually gains, like, levels worth of experience. And every time they level up, you can pick a new their ability or extra stats or whatever. This guy, however, he went to silver. You can click the 
description, silver he gained the unholy champion ability. He probably also gained some extra stats, I just didn't notice. Unholy champion basically just means he does more damage uh, against good units. So, elves beware. And my slow little zombies. What I'm actually going to do is just try and grab some of these little resources that aren't guarded. These little zombie guys. Maybe I'll even move him to the underground just to show you what it's like. But I mean, yeah, this is kind of how the game plays out. Like, you go, you'll, you know, recruit units from your different towns, try and take over different towns, build up armies, conquer the world, you know, and it's a really great game. Like, it's it's been kind of a short video to really show you all of the depth that this game actually has. Um, I was just checking out this tent to see what they have available to hire. Those crushers are pretty great. They're great for sieges. They have this wall crushing ability. Basically, they do double damage to walls. Bombers, yes, they are these old suicide bombers. Annoying as hell if you can't kill them before they actually kill themselves. Now, though, I'll just take one of these guys. And that will end my turn. I'm going to do one more turn and just see if I can find a town to attack. Uh, it probably wouldn't even be that interesting of a siege, considering it likely wouldn't have walls or anything. Oh. You know what I was telling about, like, uh, independents who attack you? Yeah, that's what happened here. My poor little zombie man is getting attacked by these evil, evil elves. What did he ever do to them? I'm try and move him behind the rocks just to keep him out of range and behind obstacles from that archer. I don't have any spells that I can cast, do I? Uh, yeah. I don't have enough mana. I'll go ahead and end my turn again. He's going to come up and attack. Zombies, as you can imagine, are not very good units. They do have a special ability called Resurgence, where if they're killed, they'll rise from the dead three combat rounds later or at the end of combat. Now, I don't believe that applies to him just being on his own, uh, because as soon as he dies, the independence will have won and combat will just be completely over. So yeah, he dies, they won. To be honest, they're a pretty cheap, pretty worthless unit. It does suck that he was about to pick up that mana there, which might have been helpful. But, uh... Bring that guy together, and we will avenge our fallen enemy. Or fallen... made the mistake of getting right up next to my archer. Now, there's no penalty for being, you know, point blank <laughs> with an archer, so that was really dumb of him, and now I just get three almost perfect shots off. Well, let's move these guys up. Honestly, this is only a matter of time before I actually win this battle. You do only get experience on your units for actually killing the enemy unit. So what I'm going to try and do is see if I can get one of my vampires to get the last hit on this unit. What I'll do is I'll attack with this one first, hopefully whittle him down a little bit. So she did five damage, that was half his health. Let's see if I can finish him off with this one. In the end, getting more experience on my death knight is never a bad thing. Some more mana. Um, I could attack those guys. The reason I don't want to attack these guys, they're on this earth node. Um, 
there are certain spots where if you have combat on them, special things happen. Uh, the Earth Node in particular basically deals damage to all of your units. So that's why I've been kind of avoiding this fight, especially with uh, having such a small army right now. Not seeing any other towns. I'm not actually even seeing any roads to potential towns. So I'm just going to go. I'll show you kind of what the uh, shadow world looks like. So I can go down here and, you know, it's geographically the exact same spot on the map. It's just a different layer of the map. And you'll notice the zombies down here are not quite so slow. So you can make good distance in the shadow world. Um, however, I do believe yeah, they are affected with shadow sickness. Basically, just lowers all your stats by 33%. Oh, it's telling me I have unanswered events. Do I want to end my turn? No, and it's actually a good thing that it told me that. I finished researching enchant weapon. So I can now cast enchant weapon on my guys. Another thing you can actually do is you can research skills. Uh, you notice all those, you remember all those little perks that uh, you could take when selecting or when creating your wizard? These are basically all the other ones um, that you didn't take. So I can research casting specialist, which lets me cast more spells every turn. I can research constructor, which you know makes my towns produce more, things like that. For now, though, I'm just going to stick with spells. Um, I've already got one enchantment, enchant weapon. I've got one direct combat damage spell. Thinking. Magic Fist is actually quite nice. And it would be good because this actually costs 12 mana. If you remember, my death ray costs 8. So that means I'd be able to cast one of each of these every turn. I'm going to go ahead and research that. Um, the limit of spells that you can cast is limited by this, your wizard's casting points. So, And the amount of mana that a spell costs is directly related to their how many casting points they cost. So if I were to go into my spells and cast Death Ray, which I'm not in combat so it won't let me cast it, that would use up eight of my casting points. Once I research Magic Fist, Actually, let me change my research so that it actually goes a little bit faster now that I have some mana. So in seven turns, when I have the Magic Fist spell, I'll be able to cast one of those since it costs 12 mana and does more damage. And then I'll be able to cast one of the Death Rays as well. So it'll be a nice little one-two combo I'll be able to do in all of my combats. Anyway, um, I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope it was informative enough. Um, or at least showed you kind of what this game is about. Again, I highly recommend that you do the tutorial. The It'll explain just things I'm sure I've missed uh, about, you know, how the game plays and whatnot. Um, again, if you like games like Civilization, games like Heroes of Might Magic, um, then this is definitely one you should look up. You can get it up for $10 on GOG.com, goodoldgames.com, or on Steam. Um, Really, they're about the same. If you like Steam and want to buy it on Steam, then that's fine. Uh, but yeah, that's a great game, and uh, I'll catch you guys later.